In this video, we're going to be talking about the Harvest Heat Pump and Thermal Battery Setup. If you're tuning into this channel for the first time, uh, we talk about how you can get the best HVAC for your home on this channel primarily, and we talk about the different products that are available on the market. And I'm very excited to talk to you about this product today because it's rare and it's, it's not as common that we get to talk about products like this that are actually revolutionary and really change the game for a lot of reasons. The heat pump we're talking about in this video is literally the only heat pump I'm aware of on the market that can also be classed as a battery and we'll talk about why being classified as a battery is important for the purpose of tax credits and how that plays into the 25d tax credit or differentiates itself from the other tax credits that are out there for standard air source heat pumps we're also just going to talk about why this particular heat pump that pairs with the harvest technology in the heat pump we're referencing today is the sunco 2 heat pump water heater this is a air to water heat pump in just because it heats water doesn't mean it won't also heat your house. And so we'll talk about how this product works. We're going to talk about it in the context of a thermal battery. And then there'll be another video that is linked at the end that talks about the heat pump in general in more depth than we talk about in this video. So if you're interested and you find this content helpful and you find this content valuable, we'll make sure to link that video at the end so you can watch it because we're this is going to be part of a series of videos about the harvest technology. And we're even going to be having a few videos coming out in the future where we actually get to interview some of the founders and talk to some of the people at Harvest because this is truly a unique product. And so I'm super excited to talk to you about it and how it works, why it's a revolutionary product. But before we get started, if you haven't done so already, please make sure you smash that like button for the algorithm and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. We put out daily and weekly content on how you can get the best HVAC for your home. Now, first off, let's talk about what a thermal battery is versus an electrochemical battery and how the Harvest product works. Now, the heat pump that is a part of this system is actually separate from the harvest unit itself. The harvest is kind of the brains of the operation, and it's a box that pipes all of the hydronics components together. Hydronics is just another word for HVAC that's related to water. But the way that this thermal battery works is if you think about a traditional electrochemical battery, you know, like a Tesla power wall, for example, the way that they store energy is pretty literal, right? They store kilowatt hours inside your battery, and then in periods, you know, over night when the sun goes down a lot of times the tesla power wall is obviously paired with people's homes when they have solar panels and so when the sun goes down your solar panels aren't generating any electricity for your home but your power wall is has stored some of that electricity so it's able to power some of your appliances overnight as a way to kind of reuse some of that electricity that you capture during the day and stored in that power wall we all understand that concept of how battery backup works now thermal batteries however are a little bit different and the way way that this concept works is that 70% of most people's homes, and this number is going to vary from home to home and region to region, obviously, but on average, about 70% of someone's energy consumption throughout a given day is typically related to their HVAC. So that's heating and cooling their home. And the way that a thermal battery works is it actually stores hot water and ties into a forced air hydronics coil, or if you have radiant flooring, it's just going to be stored in a storage tank. And what this harvest system does it's a combination of three items that all work together to do a combination of things. So the first item is the Sunco 2 CO2 powered heat pump water heater. The second item is the harvest, which is basically the harvest is the brains of the system. And that's what controls all the components within the systems. And then the third item is a thermal storage tank where the hot water is stored. Now the Sunco 2 heat pump water heater or air to water heat pump is another way of stating that is what it sounds like. It's a heat pump that heats water and provides you with hot water. However, what it does in conjunction with the harvest brain or module that is connected to the system is that the harvest module will dictate when that heat pump water heater kicks on to store hot water in that storage tank. So that way it's stored later for when you need it in the evenings. Now, the brilliance to this is that in the middle of the day is typically when your electric rates are lowest. So number one, you're benefiting from lower electric rates. And number two, two, your heat pump efficiency, especially in the cold months, is typically going to be in the middle of the day from, let's say, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. That's going to be when your heat pump is operating most efficiently, especially
especially in cold climates, because it's going to be a little bit warmer outside. And so because it's warmer outside, you're going to get a higher COP, which stands for coefficient of performance. And that's simply a measurement of how efficient a system is or a heat pump is in terms of comparison, how many kilowatts of heat are generated per kilowatt of energy consumed in order to produce that heat. And this system is very efficient. We talk more about that in the video that's linked at the end, because today I really just want to focus on the thermal battery and how this works. But basically what this does is that in the middle of the day, when the heat pump can run most efficiently and when electric rates tend to be cheapest, like again, that's going to be from you know 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. or 4 p.m. And this is going to vary in each of your metros and regions, depending on your specific utility. This heat pump will be running outside and heating up water and storing it in that storage tank. And then when your home needs to heat itself, what it does is that hot water is stored at 150 degrees and it's tied into a forced air hydronics coil in addition to your domestic hot water. Now, domestic hot water is just another term, things like baths or showers or using the dishwasher. So anytime you're using hot water to wash your hands or anything like that, that is considered domestic hot water. A forced air hydronics coil is a coil, that same hot water flowing through it. And essentially when a blower runs across that coil, it heats up the air and it pulls the heat out of that water that's circulating through that coil. And this is something that you'll see often in condo buildings that are tied into boilers, for example, where they will have a boiler that heats hot water for the central building and circulates that hot water through a series of coils throughout all the individual condominiums. And then when people turn on their heater in the winter, it's actually just blowing air across that coil that has hot water flowing through it. And that's how they heat their house. This system does the same thing. But the reason it's brilliant is that instead of storing thermal energy in the form of electrochemical storage, like a traditional battery, it's actually storing that energy based on the demands of your home inside a giant storage tank. So you now have a water tank that stores all of your hot water for the day, as well as your heating needs for the day. And the reason this is unique and a little bit better is number one, you don't have battery degradation with this sort of system in the same way that you do with electrochemical storage. Um, there's a lot of people that are critics of EVs and they will talk about how electric vehicles, although they are super fast and fun to drive, if you've never driven one, they are pretty sweet. But aside from that, they will criticize that the batteries, you know, they wear down over time and eventually you can't get the same range and there's battery degradation. And although that's true, you know, depending on your use case, that may or may not be viable. In this video, we're not really talking about EVs, but the bottom line is the same thing is true for any rechargeable battery, right? The phone you use or any type of device that has a battery, every time it has a charge and discharge cycle, that battery life actually gets diminished slightly until after years and years of use, that battery has a much shorter lifespan than it did when it was brand new. Well, in this instance, you don't have that same problem because the tank doesn't have any sort of degradation as it relates to battery storage because you're storing able to store the same amount of heated water to store your heat for the day. Now, there's another benefit to this that has to do with some of the tax credits and rebates that are available in the heat pump space right now. Because if you look at most air source heat pumps and a lot of the heat pumps that we talk about on this channel, like one of our favorites, which is the Daikin Fit, or some of the Bosch heat pumps that are also excellent heat pumps, they qualify for a tax credit that is unfortunately capped at $2,000. And there's some other stipulations. However, this particular system qualifies for the 25D tax credit, which is a battery tax credit. And what that means is there is no cap on the amount that you are able to write off up to 30% of the purchase price and installation costs. And so the, where that compares is that let's say you were buying an air source heat pump like the Daikin Fit and let's say you got a bid for $20,000. Well, in that instance, $2,000 tax credit would really only be 10% of the purchase price for that particular system. And I'm just throwing a random number out there. That same system could be $10,000, could be $30,000. Who knows? It's going to vary from region to region because the biggest cost in any of these installations is always going to be labor because of the exorbitant costs of running a heating and air conditioning business. So if you get a few quotes, you'll be able to know what these systems go for in your area. But the bottom line is that you would still be capped to basically writing off $2,000 or taking a $2,000 tax credit on that system. However, that is not the case with this system because this system is classified as battery storage. You are able to write up to 30% of its costs, meaning that if you tied this in with a radiant floor heating system and you were remodeling your home and you had to put in radiant and floor heating plus a big storage system and you were running duct work so that you could have forced air hydronics and you get the picture, this turned into a really expensive project, but you were remodeling anyways. And so you 
you wanted to put in a higher end system. Well, now you would be able to take advantage of a tax credit that accounts for 30% of whatever your investment is in this particular product, because not only is this a super efficient, super eco-friendly or air to water heat pump is another term for how they're known, but this is also again, a battery. And as a result, you are able to take a larger write-off. Now that is really only relevant if you live in the United States. If you live overseas, that doesn't affect you as much. There are several other reasons that we love this heat pump that I want to talk about briefly. But before we do that, if you're enjoying this content so far, please smash that like button for the algorithm and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. We put out daily content and weekly content like this about how you can get the best HVAC for your home. And if you're finding this content helpful, it's a free way you support the channel so that we can continue to put out more content like this. But the other reasons that we absolutely love this heat pump is number one, it is paired with a CO2 powered water heater. Now, if you've been watching this channel recently, you know, we just recently put out a video about the 410A phase out and the new phase in of the new refrigerants, R32 and R454B. Well, a lot of people have commented on the fact that refrigerants like CO2, which is just carbon dioxide, or R290, which is just propane, are being used around the world in monoblock applications. And this is a monoblock water heater. If you want to know what a monoblock water heater is, it's basically just a self-contained refrigeration circuit. So all the refrigerant stays outside with the condenser versus having a traditional split system like the new R32 and R454B systems. Any of the traditional systems that we have in the United States, 99.9% .9 of them are going to be traditional split systems, not monoblock systems. And the video that will be linked at the end will explain that a little bit more in depth. But the reason I absolutely love this product is because it uses CO2 as a refrigerant, that means that there will be no forced phase out of this product. Now, we've been talking about products like this and R290 air to water heat pumps for a while and how we're excited when they'll finally start coming to the US because the truth is, is although this might seem like a new technology, it's not actually new, it's just new to us in the United States. These systems have been battle tested overseas in Japan, in Europe, and as a result, you're not buying some new technology that might be gimmicky or might be in its trial phase. These have literally been around for decades and they're very reliable and they don't use a proprietary refrigerant and I absolutely love them for that reason. And the other reason I love them is in particular in the Colorado market or the Denver region, we run into a lot of homes where people have forced air, but they might also have radiant in-floor heating, or they might be doing a remodel and they want to add radiant in-floor heating, or they might have a boiler. And this particular system, although it can't replace a boiler in the context of some, if you have, let's say traditional radiators in your home, we talk about why that is more in that video that will be linked at the end. But the bottom line is that water temperatures are capped at about 150 degrees Fahrenheit. And as a result, most radiators need a minimum of about 170 degrees in order to put out the right BTU. Most radiators or baseboard radiators need at least 170 degree Fahrenheit water temperature in order to put out enough heat to work properly. And that's why air to water heat pumps tend to work well in applications with radiant in-floor heating because the water set point is much lower. It's somewhere, it can be as low as 90 degrees Fahrenheit up to 110 or even 130 Fahrenheit on the high end. And so this particular particular system works well in a variety of applications. It also pairs well with forced air hydronics applications, which means if you have a traditional forced air system right now, but you've been wanting to put in a forced and replace your water heater as well with a heat pump, this system can replace your water heater, give you a thermal battery storage. You get that tax credit. You also get a heat pump water heater that is now your source forced air heating for the home. And you can tie it in with an air conditioner for your home. So you can literally hit all the bases and cover and check all the boxes when it comes to getting a more comfortable home and a little bit more dynamic technology that you can take advantage of. And if you're interested in this particular product and you want this to come to your market, the truth is right now, Harvest is actually rolling this out in limited areas. So they have contractors in place that can install these and are trained up on them. But if you are interested and you really want this type of product or you think you might want this type of product, there's a link in the description below where you can actually submit your information and say, hey, I'm interested in learning more more about the Harvest CO2 heat pump and this particular product. And what will happen is Harvest is actually going to use that information to see where they can go to next to help get contractors kind of trained up on these products because this is a revolutionary product. It has a huge use case for a lot of America. I'm personally very interested in this product and would put one in my own home. So I did happen to just recently replace my HVAC in the past few years. So I don't have a need for it at the moment, but as soon as I do, I will probably put in something like this because it's truly a revolutionary 
upcoming products. But if you're interested in that, uh, click the link in the description to request more information. And as promised earlier, there'll be a few videos popping up because again, this is part of a series of videos that we were making about this particular heat pump, or you could call it a heat pump battery. If you're interested, make sure you check out those videos when they pop up on the screen if you haven't done so already. And we will catch you on the next episode.